had a superb start, superb first half. Um, they've driven, you know, in the first few minutes you thought that Kilkenny were putting their grip on the game in the first four or five minutes, but as soon as Joe Canning got the goal, the whole team just seemed to settle for him. And like, it's amazing to see guys like, you know, Tommy Walsh, Brian, Brian Hogan and JJ Delaney, they're having no impact on the game whatsoever. Now, that's not something you assume with, with uh, Kilkenny. So, I mean, they've got great credit in the past for getting their matchups right, but at the end of the day, they've lost the spine of their defence. Tommy Walsh is running all over the place, mm. but he's not getting on Tanny the ball. And likewise, TJ Reid is the only forward you could say is winning, a, winning his personal battle up front. So Galway are working really hard. The real hunger in, the, in their, they're attacking the ball everywhere. Um, they're clinical when they get their chances. And you know we'll be a bit disappointed. Maybe Kilkenny have come back into it to give away a few soft frees there at the at the end of the first mm -hmm. half. But overall, they'll be delighted with that first half performance, give building themselves a five point cushion. They will, but they've played so well. Kilkenny haven't quite clicked, and there's only five points in it. Not a lot in hurling. Well, I tell you, Michael, now they haven't been allowed to click because in a way it's mm -hmm. a replica of the Leinster mm -hmm. final. Apart from the scoring, you know, you take the score. We were never expected the scoring to be so high as the Leinster final. First 20 minutes, completely dominated by Galway. The very same formula. Their half-back line, their midfielders, their forwards, covering back, fighting like hell for every ball, not letting Kilkenny win the ball in the air, which is usually their forte of winning it in the air, and when they get it, again, using it intelligently. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a crucial, you know, in, in a tight game like this, discipline is absolutely vital. Yes. And Kilkenny haven't been disciplined in their defence. No. They have given away some terrible frees. Now, the danger with Galway, the only... The only bit of a warning for Galway was the last five minutes. They gave away three frees, they were cruising, they were, they were mm. very disciplined, and then they gave away three very, very silly frees. The game is now there for the taking for Galway, you know, and if they can push on after halftime, the crucial time will be just push on after yes, halftime yeah, and sure. open that gap a little bit further, yeah. and then we'll see, you know, I, I, I think Kilkenny, a lot of the Kilkenny lads are out on their feet. Mm. Okay, well, we'll have to wait and see what happens in the first half. I know one thing that happened uh, in the second half, one thing that happened in the first half to Moses, you can build up players, you can talk about great players in any sport, soccer, rugby, GA, whatever the case is, and sometimes it doesn't quite happen for them on the day. Joe Canning was talked a lot about. Yeah. He got a ball. <laughs> I, I, it was I, going one, way, one it place. Was, it was going one way, and you know? I mean, that, we said at the start, look, Galway needed a great start to the game, right? I mean, here, look, this goalkeeper, you're saying, is he ever going to hit it? Look, and what a clearance off his left hand side. It's a massive, massive clearance down the field. And Galway have been doing this. They're competing under every ball, the breaking ball, they're getting onto it. And when James Regan gets it, look, he's nodding on his mind, but to turn Brian Hogan and to start getting a face to his own goal and get to the side to Canning. Now, Canning has a fortune of work to do here. The two or three guys around him, but it's an unbelievable stop. And when we see it behind the goal, see the camera again. When he gets inside, he cuts across and he's onto his best side, left hand side. And where does he go? across to the other side of the goal. He gives the goalkeeper no chance. I mean, that was a massive, massive start. And that's what Galway needed. And I mean, I mentioned it before, like the half, that half-hour battle. Niall Burke and Brian Hogan there has been doing a terrific, even though he's not scoring a fortune of scores, he's been doing a terrific battle because he's winning ball off the air and it's breaking and he's throwing it out to the runners. And once, you mentioned about freeze, that can you get away. They have no other choice but to bring down the Galway guys because they're going straight down, channel one, straight at their faces. And it's exactly a replica the Leinster final. But also, Liam, uh, Ger alluded to the fact that it's not clicking for Kilkenny because they're not being let. Uh, balls going into the Galway defence, either Galway were defending it very well or a lot of it wasn't great quality stuff. Yeah, well, I think they're under pressure striking the ball all the time. I mean, they've had seven wides in that first half, you know, and every time they get in, you know, Galway are defiant in defence, and, you know, Earl Tanya, their midfielders are covering back. So here's Henry Shefflin getting the ball, and, you know, there's Earl Tanya back getting the touch onto the ball. You see, they're getting, just getting the nose and hurley to it. Breaks down, and out he comes, out, you know, he's coming out with that ball. So, you know, they're very much, they, they'll be delighted if they can pack the defence there. I mean, they've gone 35 minutes, and you couldn't say Kilkenny have had any smell of, of looking like getting the goal. And, you know, when they're breaking out in, they break in numbers. So, you know, overall, you'd have to say that Galway defence, as I said earlier, you know, TJ Reid is the only forward that looks to be causing And when you look at uh, household names like, you know, Richie Power or Narkin, these guys just can't get their hands on the ball. And, uh, you know, it's very, very impressive by that Galway defence to limit this forward line to seven points in the first half. And, I mean, four of those have, have come from freeze. I think if they keep their level of discipline, you know, that defence is well on top. They'll be, yeah. they'll be very, very confident at half time in the stress room. Also, Ger, sometimes the little bonus scores that you get in a match can be crucial in a game like this in an All Ireland final. Niall Burke got one. Niall Donahue got another kind of points out of more or less nothing. Well, I, I suppose you can see the light. There's only, apart from Joe, only Niall Burke and Niall Donahue have scored. Mm -hmm. And even though Galway seemed yeah. to be the, the wing back, like, you know. But uh, here's Niall Burke's point, you know. He's, he's attacking. 
You know, we showed at the start, like Brian, everybody knows Brian Hogan. He did that bit short of pace, takes him on, bursts past him, he hasn't the pace to catch up with him, and a lovely neat stroke. The thing about Galway is they have they have that class, you know, they have they have the village side. Now they, they go the, the pine pine I don't know this. He, he two, two men think of attacking him. He has a look up and like David Collins did in the Leinster final, he's in the same wing now today and he puts it over from, from, from that wing. So himself and David Collins. David Collins is just outstanding mm. in that first half. Those two are the real two that are driving the whole thing forward for Galway. All right, we're headed for a short break here in the programme. Back with more on today's All-Ireland Hurling final right after these. And don't go away because we'll also be giving you the opportunity to enter our special competition. You could be heading off to a destination. Kilkenny, they're packing the defence, breaking from midfield, and like up front, they're rotating the four, three or four forwards. And again, Joe Cannon is on fire. A goal from Joe Dara. I know it's only three points in the world, but it actually ignites the whole crowd. Their intensity is very strong, and they have the feet on Kilkenny. Kilkenny didn't settle. Now, they got a few late scores from Freeze, but there was 20 minutes to hardly got any score at all. But but even though we're Galway are five points up, what they need to do there is tack on, go five, go six, go seven, and eight, drive on from there, because if they leave Kilkenny in the game, they're still capable of coming into it. Eddie, what's your view on Kenny in the first half. Yeah, I think uh, Cyril nailed it there. Um, they're just, um, I felt myself that the half forward line for Kilkenny against the half Galway's half back line was going to be the crucial area. And Galway are winning it there. They're going up, they're breaking the ball the whole time, and they always have someone breaking onto it. But I think the Kilkenny forwards are just, they're just a small bit static and they're kind of rotating a little bit. And they're just not really in it at the moment. TJ is the only one that's probably really threatening from play. So they need to get going fairly quick. But um, Another concern, I suppose, is a few of our backs are after picking up yellow cards. You know, I suppose you could argue Bar Barry has been a little bit fussy keeping tabs on things, but that's a concern going into the second half. Three, possibly four of our backs are after picking up yellow cards, but um, they're, 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 not, they're not coping with Galway at the moment, but uh, they, they, they've, they badly need to, they're going to have to have a good hard chat now because it's a huge challenge ahead of them now to turn this around. Yeah. What, what will Galway do now, second half? Will they be able to keep this going, Sil? Uh, I think they will. They're very fresh. They're young. like you know, they're, they're young and the, this is new to them, so they're really kind of driving for it. They need to get on the next point, six, seven or eight, and drive on from there, not let Kilkenny back into it. The breeze there is tricky. I, I thought like that in the first half, Kilkenny had, but down here, like on the ground, it's swirling around. It isn't really favouring anyone. But if they can stop Kilkenny in the first ten minutes, tack on a few points, go, we're in a great position. But if they leave them in the game, Kilkenny will be very dangerous. OK, guys, thanks a lot. We've got to go back upstairs to Michael. Thank you, lads. And just a reminder that Galway are leading Kilkenny 1927 points. Kilkenny back out on the field, as you can see. We're waiting for Galway. Uh, Tomás McCahy, I saw Eddie Brennan glancing up the line there during that interview. I think he was half expecting Cody to I know, yes, give I him mean, a nod because they need something to happen. Yeah, they need something. I mean, they've lost their way. You know? and one thing that has surprised me about Kilkenny is certainly when the, we mentioned about going man marking and stuff like that, right? I mean, they've, they've, some of their big markers that are running around the full back line have gone, been gone away off the field, out towards centre field. JJ Delaney has found himself out there as well. And that's going to suit Galway down to the ground. I mean, the more space that you're going to let inside there, it's there for the likes of Joe Canning, for the Nile Burks and, and, and the James Regans to pick off scores inside. And look, I suppose one point from play from 17 minutes for Kilkenny in an Ireland final certainly isn't good enough, right? I mean, they are in big trouble at this stage. If you're a Galway, I would hope that they don't go back into defensive mode that they did in the semi-final against Cork mm. and start to throwing back possession to Cork and the man. It's now there for them. Go for it and have that belief. All right, and here come Galway. And by the way, the official attendance here is just under 82,000. 81,932. They're in for some second half, I can tell you. Time to hand back to Joe Canning and Michael Dignan. Thanks, Michael. Well, we've seen Galway, the better team in the first half. I'm sure that has pleased Monty Kerrin's father of Alan and Mark, who's recovering in hospital after surgery. And uh, in Dubai, watching Conor Dunphy and Ola Laura Coughlin. No changes on either team. Start of the second half. As uh, Henry Shefflin plays it in here as far as Richie Power. Power takes off, tries to get right through the centre there, drives it, draw the ball, and uh, succeeds in drawing that foul. And an early opportunity now for Kilkenny to get other, another score. A yellow card there is Vinicius to Fergal Moore. Yeah, I think that's a harsh enough yellow card. You know, he did put the hand in over the shoulder, but Richie Power was going to ground. He had nowhere to go, you know, and it was a free, but a very, very harsh yellow card. Henry Shefflin did try for a goal earlier on from uh, a free around 20 metres out. This time he's quite content to put it over the bar. Fifth pointed free for him. And so they've managed once again to eat into the Galway lead. 
And this is the period of the game I think that Galway really have to, they have to hurl away now because Kilkenny so many times over the years have come out at the start of the second half and started so well. We saw the last evening against Tipperary. So this is the crucial 10 minutes now for Galway to, to, to weather the storm. At one stage, Galway led Kilkenny by seven points in this final. Pressure on the Kilkenny backs again. Damien Hayes playing it back here towards Niall Burke. And Niall Burke, with unerring accuracy, puts it right over the bar. And that's a very rapid response to the point by Henry Shefflin from a free. So they go point for point then, start of the uh, second half here of this All-Ireland final. And that's what Damien Hayes has been doing all year. He's given that little hand pass, he's not poking the ball in aimlessly, and a great score there by Niall Burke again, who's having a super game at centre forward. Yeah, they're not just uh, depending on Joe Canning and Damien Hayes, others are contributing as well. And this time in the middle of the field, it's the very hard-working here, Latanya. He's having a terrific match. Injured a couple of times early on, but he certainly worked his socks off. That as far as Damien Hayes. Hayes with two kill Kenny men after him. Plays it off here as far as David Burke, looking for his first point in this match. Would be a good time to get it, but he's put it just to the left-hand side, draw it, threw it away, and it was uh, just going offline. Stays at 110 to 8 points. Quick puck out this time as far as Jackie Tyrrell. And Jackie launches it in towards the opposing 20-metre line. Off to Antonio Gregan, got it at the second attempt. Played it outside here as far as Fergal Moore. Dragged down, three out for Galway. Galway playing with great tenacity, great spirit, and Kilkenny having it all to do. They are five points behind. Yeah, three. Fergal Moore having a super game there. And Tony, you know, all their backs are well on top, and uh, they're going to be very, very happy. Tilly there, that last score, David Burke, because that really epitomised all his play. Earl Italian, Damien Hayes involved. And again, you know, an easy enough wide at this level that should be sticking him over the bar. Paul Murphy couldn't get that away. Damien Hayes slips it back here as far as Andy Smith. And Andy Smith tries his luck from uh, way out. He got a point in the first half. He had other options there. That's seven wides now for Galway. Seven wides for Kilkenny as well. He might have played that ball in towards the square and given the other forwards a better opportunity. It stays at 110 to eight points. David Herity's puck out. Big leap in the air here as it's batted back out here. JJ Delaney has followed Joe Canning out along the field. There was speculation as well about if Big Joe went out. Joe JJ's gone after him. This time it's Jackie Tyrrell trying to get the ball away from uh, the four time the player. In there as far as James Regan. And this time held off by Kieran Joyce, the 25 year old from Rauer in Eddie Cares Club. Big, huge clearance out of defence. Up towards TJ Reid. Had a good first half. Had some good moments in that. But it's Niall Dunne who got a score in that first half. Poor clearance. Under pressure from Owen Larkin. Straight to Richie Hogan. This time trying to set up TJ Reid. They need this to go over. And TJ Reid supplies another one for Kilkenny. One in each half for the 24 year old from Bally Hale Shamrocks. Yeah, lovely little ball there by Richie Hogan. Really should have been cleared up the field by Neil Dunne when he got possession. And TJ Reid, who has been a you know, has been consistent since the start. He's got a couple of nice points now. Well, once again, here, Latanian is in the wars here and uh, indications there from uh, Maddie Kenny, one of the selectors, that he might not be able to continue. And that would be a big loss because since his move into mid... The ball, he's no right to get involved in and he threw his body in and he's taken a few knocks, but he should be OK. Here's Tommy Welch. Ball in play, heat stepped out. James Regan tries to get it, tries to link up with... Here Latanian once again, but there is no space available. And it's got to be a Galway ball. And Here Latanian has got to be the one who will take it. Physically a very strong man, as you can see. Tough, hard, competitor, but brave as well into the bargain. So Galway by four points, early stages of the second half. That's a good cut up but it should favour Brian Hogan as he takes it in his stride and moves forward here, being pursued there by Joe Canning. It's still Hogan knocking it out here as far as Aidan Fogarty sets off. David Collins is in hot pursuit. Fogarty hasn't scored so far, but then nobody with the uh, numbers 13, 14 or 15 for Kilkenny has scored so far. And this time, this ball, is it over? There's a bit of a dispute. Richie Power saying it is. But uh, the referee is going in. One of the umpires has waved it wide. The other man wasn't sure. It stays at 110 to 9 points until referee Barry Kelly has consulted with the umpires. Now, he must have had a good view of that. And I think he's looking over to his linesman as well, who would have been directly behind the ball. And I think he's given the score, yeah. So a score for Richie Power, his first point in this final.
and now there are three between them. 110 to 10 points, and it's hotting up. We're just some, what, six minutes into the second half. James Cahill about to pocket it out. This is where Galway now need plenty of steadying influences. Tommy Welsh trying to get it back. Erla Tanyan trying to get it up onto his stick. Dashing in here to try and take it as Aiden forward. He has gone back in towards midfield. Tumbling over was Richie Hogan. Taking it away, Andy Smith. Diagonally across once again over there. Beautifully contained by David Burke. David Burke trying to make headway. Niall Burke, his namesake, trying to come onto it. And the Kilkenny defences. Defence just uh, took control of that situation. Brian Hogan slipping the hand pass out to Michael Fennelly. They'll need a big return for Michael Fennelly if they're going to win this final, Kilkenny. Dropped there and returned and recovered by Tony O'Gregan, but helped as he was doing so by David Collins. Industrious as ever. All the way down towards James Regan. Trying to cut inside Kieran Joyce. Regan here. And he stepped out over the sideline, but the referee saw a push, and it's going to be a free to go away. And, that and it gives... Joe Canning once again an opportunity to come across and try and stretch his own personal tally. He's got 1-6 from the first half. Yeah, D David Burke, a great diagonal ball by Andy Smith and David Burke caught it well, but he was closed down very, very quickly. And again, this is just to put four points between them again now from Joe. Out in the sideline, he doesn't seem to have got any handy free. A couple of in the first half, but he's, got, he's had a lot of frees from out in the line. Real challenging angle once again confronting him. But he is a very, very prolific free taker. And as I say it, it's the curse that you put on the guy. But that was uh, out near the sideline. Difficult one for him to take, but it's still 110 to 10 points. Yeah, well, he spent most of the second half out around the field making long runs and covering and blocking. I prefer to see him in around the goals. We've said it before, but you know, he's, he's our best forward. He's 100 yards out from the goals. From that puck out by David Harrity, it spills around in there. And in comes Michael Fennelly, down near the goal where he scored a goal against Tip in last year's final. A real pile-up of bodies there, and the referee's going to have to bring the ball out and throw it in. Richie Power, one of the last to get up there. Two midfielders reporting for duty. Finally runs out as far as Erlitanian. And back into the attack, Galway hope to go. But it's broken up here quickly by JJ Delaney. Slipping it forward, but out over the line. It was intended for Jackie Turrell, who's protesting that it went off a, a Galway stick. Line ball to the tribesmen. Continue to lead in this match by 110 to 10 points. Only right at the very, very beginning of this match were they behind when Henry Shefflin got the opening point of the match. But apart from that, it's been Galway all the way. Major, I don't think I can remember seeing a Kilkenny that looks so nervous. They seem to be very different. JJ Delaney normally so sure in the ball. And I don't think he's got a ball in his hands since he started again. Three times in his career as manager, Brian Cody has been beaten by Galway, including this year. Bit of a bogey team, they have been down the years. This time, Paul Murphy gets it out. Out to TJ Reid, inside his own half of the field. Collected well there, and slipped back out by Kevin Hines, out to the wing here. It was intended for Niall Donoghue to clear away, and he might do so yet, but there was a foul, and it's going to be a free to Kilkenny. Bit of nervousness at the back by Galway, but that's quite understandable. They're playing in their first final by and large. Well, you saw the tactics there. TJ Reid played a bad ball inside there. Great cover there by Richie Power, and Neil Dunno held his hurl. Uh, Richie Power covered a lot of ground. But you saw TJ Reid, in fact, all we're trying to do is sit Tony O'Gregan and Kevin Hines right back in front of the goals. It's going to be Henry Shefflin to take it. Now 33 years of age. Well, he had just as tough an angle as Joe Canning earlier on, but this time he's got it absolutely right straight between the uprights so Kilkenny continue to eat into Galway's lead and it's now down to a two-point margin and the Kilkenny fans have traveled in their usual huge numbers it's almost like an annual day out in September for them up against uh, Anthony Cunningham and Tom Hellebert's team huge puck out collected well once again by the very very strongly built Paul Murphy the army man helped out by Richie Hogan. Up it goes towards Richie Power. Controlled by Fergal Moore. And the Galway man stick was held. Three out to Galway. They're claiming Henry is anyway that uh, he took a dive. But uh, the referee saw it otherwise. And now he's telling Andy Smith to get away from the scene of the action. There's got to be a free. The free's been awarded. Henry has certainly fired up. If he's got to win his ninth medal on the field of play, they're going to have to do it the hard way because Kilkenny are finding life very, very tough this afternoon, as many in Kilkenny, in particular Brian Cody and his management team, had been predicting. 
Here's Johnny O'Grady. Great play by Fergal Moore again. What a game he's having a corner back for Galway. Inside towards Cannon this time and in over his head. There was nothing he could do about it to contain that one. Well, that's a couple of times now that Tony O'Gregan has taken freeze. The first one went out of play completely. This one was over the head, and this is where Joe Canning is saying that JJ was impeding him. Yeah, well, look at that. Galway have only got one point in the second half. You know, they need to settle down. They've hit a few bad wides, and Kilkenny are just chipping away, and it's more that Galway aren't putting them away at this stage. Kilkenny are getting back into the game. Back out to the industrious James Regan. Up from corner forward to midfield. Challenged here by Cyril Donnelly. Held on to somehow by JJ Delaney. Needing a bit of assistance, getting it from Kieran Joyce. Taken in by Kevin Hines this time. Out as far as Ir Litanian. Back into the inside forwards. In there towards Niall Burke, who got into full forward, followed by Brian Hogan, who's done a good job on him. Out it comes once again as far as Paul Murphy. Certainly Brian Hogan has recovered after a jittery opening quarter of an hour against Niall Burke. Out of the middle of the park here, it's David Burke. Oh, that's a poor ball. Straight there as far as Kieran Joyce. Back once again it comes towards Richie Parr. Sends in over his head. Across comes Johnny Cohen. Low ball in as far as Damien Hayes. Good control of the ball. Takes it away from Jackie Tyrrell. Shows pace. Shows commendable commitment. Some 11 minutes now since Galway scored. As Cyril Donnellan tries to put that right. The umpires look at it, but it's got away to the left-hand side. And it's another missed opportunity. Yeah, well, it's a real game of cat and mouse jo now, Joe. What Kilkenny have done is they've dropped TJ Reid out to the middle of the field. Great catch there by Brian Hogan, but TJ Reid had been dropped out around the middle, leaving Kevin Hines loose inside or Tony O'Gregan loose in around the full back line. And, uh, you know, at the other end of the field, then Galway have, little, have less room because of that. So it's a game of cat and mouse now, and it's anyone's game. Galway still applying the pressure. David Burke again, foraging around midfield. Henry Shefflin's after him, so too Michael Fenley. Still managed to get it away into a two man inside forward line. And again, this is taken down here by Brian Hogan, having a very good second half, highly influential. Up towards Richie Power this time, breaks down here. It's Aidan Fogarty, and Fogarty, quick as you like, puts it over the bar for his first point in this All Ireland hurling final. And now there's just a point between the teams, the margin back to one, 110 to 12 points. And that little man there, looking on as uh, one of his idols, I'm sure, Aidan Fogarty, got his first point here from a tight enough angle, put it over the bar. Yeah, and here's Brian Hogan again, who's really powered into the game, and Paul Murphy, I think, in particular, since half-time. But you saw there, Galway had four, maybe to two over, good knockdown by Richie Power, and a good score by Aidan Fogarty. Two Kilkenny players went for the one ball. This time, they're under pressure, but this time they hold out, and it's JJ Delaney, the fullback, who clears it into open territory. In there, as far as Owen Larkin, has a support player if he uses him. TJ Reid was just ahead of him, opted to play it inside towards Colin Fennelly, yet to score. Here's Fennelly. Johnny Cohen came across, like the cavalry, coming across there in the nick of time. Out as far as Niall Donoghue. Deep into midfield. Regan there against a couple of Kilkenny players. This time supported and well hit away by David Burke. Only as far as Tommy Welch. Back around corner back at this stage, picking up his man. Inside towards Richie Parr. It's a one-point game, remember. Out as far as David Collins. Up towards Damien Hayes. Fascinating contest in the second half. Out it comes to uh, Brian Hogan. Once again, starring at centre-half back. Very much the dominant figure in that line at this stage. Beautifully in as far as Henry Shefflin gets away from Hines. And Shefflin strikes it. And Shefflin's the one who puts the teams on terms. Henry Shefflin's seventh point of this match. The would-be history maker ties it up with 50 minutes gone. Teams level in this All-Ireland final for the second time. Yeah, that's a great score. You see the time in there. He just waited for that ball, brought it down and over the bar. A great score. And, you know, Galway have got very negative. They've only scored one point, as I said earlier, in the second half. Uh, the drop, you know, dropping men back is fine, but Kilkenny are able to pick off scores like that from out the field. And Galway really need to drive on now. You know, they still have loads of pace, loads of power in their legs. It's an injury to Fergal Moore. There's certainly Conor Cooney there is uh, the substitute being prepared to come on. And uh, Cooney was the one who lost his place in the team for James Regan. Brian Cody will be delighted with the way his team have just worked their way back into this match through hard graft. Referee down there checking with his umpires. 
Yeah, that's what sort of game it is, Joe. You know, it's not the highest scoring game, it's not flashy, but it's absolutely tough. Every ball has been fought for. Him. Tommy Walsh getting a yellow card there, obviously something off the ball with Cyril Donlan that we didn't see, and uh, that's Tommy Walsh now and JJ Glenny, both on yellow cards back there around the full back line. Four yellow cards this year, two per team, as James Regan goes up, Conor Cooney comes up, remembered for his uh, couple of early goals against Offaly in the Leinster semi-final, but uh, the scores ran dry for him in recent matches and he lost his place, now he's got his chance to be the hero. They'll all be heroes in Galway if they manage to win their first All-Ireland for 24 years. Kilkenny going for two in a row, six in seven years, and the referee isn't finished just yet, having uh, received some advice from his other officials, linesmen and umpires. And this time it's Kieran Joyce has been called across. And uh, just as Tommy Walsh, number five, got a yellow card a little while ago, Barry Kelly now issuing another yellow card. So three of the backs have been yellow carded for Kilkenny, Delaney, Walsh and Joyce now. Still a lot of time to be played in this match. We're only 17 and a half minutes into the second half. The issue is hanging in the balance in front of a crowd of just under 82,000. James Skell playing it down. Tommy Walsh trying to come for it. Wriggling his way this way and that. What a player he is. Terrific player, Tommy Walsh. One of the great heroes of Kilkenny, wonderfully crafty and competitive, nine times an all-star. Kept scoreless by Lar Corbett in the semi-final in a kind of a role reversal exercise. Free by uh, Paul Murphy. He's had a great match. That's dangerously in there towards TJ Reid. Coming right back out to Earl Italian. Back onto the 45-metre line, Walsh lets it drop, Murphy tries to get to it, here's the new man in, Conor Cooney, with his first touch, surrounded by Kilkenny players, now there's an extra bit of sparkle in Kilkenny's play, that buzz which was missing at times in the first half, maybe down to nervousness, maybe just a hangover as a result of the hammering in the Leinster final, they lost by 10 points after all, but certainly now they are much more assertive and much more looking like their old selves. Yeah, the experiences maybe begin to tell, Conor Cooney there, just after coming on, thought he was going to tap it over, and Richie Hogan got back, lovely hook, and uh, long way out now for Henry Shifton, but he should have no problem with the distance. Two great shooters in action here, Joe Canning and Henry Shefflin. Henry with this monster of a free. Deep inside his own half of the field, he's now got eight points in this match. King Henry, their hero. Is he on his way to a ninth All-Ireland winner's medal? Kilkenny lead by one, and there are 54 minutes and a little over gone. James Skehill, now there's a need for a rapid response by Galway. As you've been saying, Michael, only one point to show for the second half so far, and that a score by Niall Burke. And here is Niall Burke, and there is a response. What a time to get it! 55 minutes gone, Niall Burke comes up with his first ever goal championship it's only a second score for Galway in the second half well what a timely boost it's come big one in Burke followed it in and that is a simply wonderful score beautifully executed 210 now to 14 points and it's Galway by two what a conclusion to this All-Ireland final we should get now Richie Hogan drop hitting it inside inside towards Richie Parr scrambling for it there was Johnny Cohen trying to get it out, helped by Tony O'Gregan, under enormous pressure, power again, gets a little chip inside here, Hogan and uh, Fogarty tries to keep the ball in, but it's knocked away in the end, out towards Damien Hayes, very near the sideline, and the linesman over there has signalled it's a line ball. Yeah, what a time, crucial time to get a goal for Galway, not normally you'd see two Kilkenny backs clashing in the air, uh, Brian, Ho Brian Hogan was dropping back there, clashed in, and great picked up by Niall Burke, he's only a young player, that's a great finish, shows great composure, low ball, no chance for David Hurley. 1-1 one, one for him in the second half, always only scores, Galway now under pressure, trying to withstand that pressure and it's Niall Donoghue, quickly back out into the middle of the field, lots of Kilkenny players there waiting for it, drop forward here, lost and regained, TJ Reid, and the man pursuing him is Damien Hayes, well, they've been boosted enormously, Galway, by that uh, goal by Niall Burke, and now they need to retain every bit of composure that they've got. 
they may be seeing the winning post but it's far too early for that it's only 56 minutes in and they're only ahead by two points and they're up against the cats and henry shefflin has this opportunity to bring it back to a one-point game again eight points so far composed himself before striking it straight between the posts again give him any bit of chance whatsoever any tiny little bit of indiscipline and he will punish you in the form he's in right now yeah great low shot there by Niall Burke hurl thrown there by Paul Murphy too lucky to escape the yellow card because it is the yellow card for thrown to hurl but you're just talking Henry Sheffield has gone out centre forward after about 15-20 minutes from Kilkenny we're in all sorts of trouble and at his age and all the injuries he's had to be out there is a tribute to the man and he's scoring everything at this stage he's an incredible player and Galway right now are trying to withstand what uh, Kilkenny are throwing at them and it'll be Jackie Turrell who will launch the next attack helped out here by Michael Fennelly deep one in towards Richie Powell brought down beautifully by Johnny Cohen what a star only 21 years of age the Loch Ray player well he's produced some assured performances this year and that one has got off the stick of Niall Burke it's going to be a line ball to Kilkenny 57 and a half minutes are gone what about this well, for a fetch that's a great catch and that's you know that's not the main part of his game you saw earlier on Conal Finley broke onto a ball and you see the pace of Johnny Cohen he got back and flicked the ball away and you know he's been he to me has been the biggest single influence on this goal with backline with the taste that he brings to the to the occasion and very very assured on the ball Richie Hogan cutting it in as far as Larkin lost it Tanyan takes it gets away from Michael Fennelly swept back down there again intended for Cyril Donlan has taken his turn in at full forward but it's Tommy Welch who gets there worked out a defence by Jackie Tyrrell again judicious use of the hand passing inside it comes towards Michael Fennelly trying to go through a minefield here loads and loads of Galway bodies back there helping out the half backs and midfield and it's worked out to David Burke wearing number 10 back around midfield but now as they fire it forward there's very few players to fire it forward too and Paul Murphy has taken it back down again two or three Galway players go for the one ball Regan got it out as far as Tanyan and he was trying to play it across to Cooney seized on immediately there but that slack ball might be David Collins is, gets there first back to Jackie Turrell once again players must be tired and weary but they're giving absolutely everything they've got in towards Henry Shefflin breaks it to himself, Shefflin Colin Fennelly saved, brilliantly saved by James Scale. I think he might have claimed me on the bottom, but what a save by James Scale. if Galway want to win this this is the crucial moment of the game Brilliant touchdown by Henry Shefflin, flicked it into Colin Fennelly straight away, and a brilliant save. I thought Henry might have gone himself and tried to beat the goalkeeper. Yeah, maybe he didn't trust the legs at this stage of his life, but he gave a brilliant, brilliant pass straight away to Colin Fennelly, and this is a crucial call now. Did he lie in the ball? Is it going to be a free-in, or will it be a, a throw-in on the 21? Well, the referee must have had a very good view of it himself. Well, the umpire certainly had, they were just beside it. Well, what's he doing? He's yeah. giving it to Kilkenny he's saying that he lay on the ball and it's going to be a free in this is huge now. opportunity this is coming huge. up we saw it in 2010 in 2009 it's a 21 free, in, free yeah. which uh, Henry Shefflin's going to take goalkeeper deemed to lay on the ball Henry striking he's put it over the bar didn't go for the uh, goal opportunity and so the teams are level once again Henry Shefflin now with 10 points you can just see a lovely touchdown here by Henry Shefflin. Hurled thrown there again by Johnny Combe, but what a save by James Cahill. Any surprise that Henry didn't go for a goal there? Well, not really, it's too tight a game. I think this is, look, there's only 10 minutes to go, it's going to go right down to the wire, and... Uh, he did it at the very beginning. I know he did, but... If they go on and lose by a point, you'd be saying it afterwards, I think it was the right call. 19, Jonathan Glynn coming in. And Conor Cooney hasn't lasted very long. That's a hard, it's hard on Conor Cooney, but a brave call by the management. Back Brian Hogan, what Brian a second Hogan. half he's had. Yeah, super. Up as far as Larkin, takes it down and then turns, and then in one striking move, puts it effortlessly over the crossbar. A point in each half by the team captain, playing today in his 35th championship match, and Kilkenny respond to the goal earlier on by Niall Burke by going back into the lead. And that's, a, that's a brilliant team score, and what a second half Brian Hogan has had. He's absolutely dominant, even though Niall Burke has scored 1-2, I dominated him in the first half and broke in for the goal there, but Brian Hogan has been very influential in the second half. 1-2, however, means they've only scored uh, two scores in the second half, Galway. They need more if they're to win this final. Damien Hayes 
back as far as Tony O'Gregan. Trying to place it this time, across here beautifully, and this time it's Cyril Donnellan. And uh, he slipped, and the referee says he was aided in his slipping by being pushed by Tommy Welch, and it's going to be a free in. And a chance now for Joe Canning. This one is certainly one he needs to nail. Can't afford to miss this. It's a highly pressurised free. Yeah, good call there, a nudge in the back. And that's, I think, a couple of puckouts have been aimed at Cyril Donnellan. You know, he's starting in very deep and running out, and he's won a few very good balls down that wing in the second half. You've got 1-6 in the first half, Joe Canning. Nothing in the second half so far. The only scores from Niall Burke. And this one is right over. <laughs> Goal and seven for Big Joe. And it is Galway, who are 2-11. Kilkenny, 17 points. So 17, Joseph Cooney has come on. And it's uh, Niall Burke who's going off. Yeah, despite scoring 1-2, but that's the, the aerial, I think, uh, dominance of Brian Hogan in the second half. Joseph Cooney's a much bigger man, and again, a big call by the goal manager. Yeah, some very, two very big calls there in rapid succession on the part of Anthony Cunningham, Matty Kenny and Tom Hellebert. Now, will they prove to be winning moves at the end of it all? Because, as you can see, there are only now about seven and a half minutes left of the 70. Matt Ruth is on. Colin Fennelly's gone off. Here we watch Johnny Glynn, and that one is a wasted opportunity by the 19-year-old, a minor last year. Had a very, very good final last year, but uh, stepping up to the senior final, could have done a little better there. Yeah, he's actually switched in to centre-forward now on, on Brian Hogan and with Joseph Cooney going out in the wing on Kieran Joyce. From the puck out, straight down through the centre towards Henry Shefflin. Again, he does it on his own, wins that ball. What a match he's playing. Trying to get through, can't do it all on his own. However, here Latanian blocks his path this time and tries to make some headway. And the referee saw some holding back by Kilkenny. And it's going to be a free for Galway, who, although not scoring very much in the second half, continue to be very, very competitive. Yeah, look at here Latanian again. How many balls has he won in that position? Just watch him there driving out with the ball. No, he, lost, he kind of lost possession, but... Was... At one stage, Michael, a little while back, about five, six, seven minutes ago, when he did get injured, I saw a signal from one of the medical people that he might not be able to continue no, and get his sub ready. He's he, does, he wasn't going to leave no, the No, he's field. been in the middle of everything, but he's, he's really read the ball very, very well, picked up an awful lot of breaking ball, just, you know, behind the front end of his half-back and full-back line. Another big one for Joe Canning. Can he land it? The answer is yes! 1-8 for Joe Canning. Out of Galway's 2-12, and Galway lead the final by a point. Six minutes to go. Is it to be Galway's fifth ever All-Ireland win, or Kilkenny's 34th? The next six minutes will tell the story, we think. There's already been a draw here in the minor, Dublin and Tipperary drawing. Irla Tanyan going forward, aware that he was going to be hooped. Tries to hold on to it somehow, being helped by Joseph Cooney, but they lose the ball to Richie Hogan, and he was fouled as he was coming out, and it's got to be a free. I see Andy Smith on the uh, ground. Yeah, I think after he was fouled there, he might have swung back to hurl. If you just watch here, high tackle there by Andy Smith. No, I didn't. I think it was from the tackle itself. Andy hurt himself when he went into the tackle. I don't think that Richie Hogan caught him. No, I didn't. No, he didn't he catch did swing. him. But you'd have to say that Irla Tanyan has been hugely influential. But look what's come down to at the end of the day. It's really a shootout between Joe Cannon and Henry Shefton. You know, absolutely. Henry has 10 great displays here today. Free coming up for Henry Shefton. Just listen to the cheers of the rival fans here. Galway fans willing their team to get over the line at the end of the 70 minutes. Kilkenny fans so used to being at Croke Park, wanting another player will be on next will be Davy Glennon if he does come on for Galway he's being readied anyway and they've also got a number 21 being prepared to come in and that's Ty Caron Henry Shefflin striking and Henry puts it over an immense performance by Henry Shefflin during the second half he had four points from freeze in the first half he's got another seven and it's now 2-12 for Galway, 18 points for Kilkenny, 18 points apiece. Teams level now for the fourth time. 
It's been a brilliant contest. You're absolutely every single ball been fiercely contested since the start of the game, and it's swung both ways. And now it looks down to the last few minutes. Absolutely riveting, and full credit to both teams. Shame there should be a loser, but that's sport. Matt Ruth couldn't take it. Here, Latanian can. What a game he's put in there in the middle of the park. Again, Paul Murphy, steady as ever, brilliant as usual. Big one all the way down to Larkin, the captain, trying to get the better here of the fullback. Oh, and Larkin goes down, is it a penalty? The referee is racing in there. He's waving his hands apart. It is a penalty for a foul on Owen Larkin, dramatically late in this final, with 67 minutes gone. Kilkenny have a chance here from a penalty to seal the All-Ireland, maybe. This is how it came about, Larkin going down, goalkeeper came diving out, and there was a back there as well, and uh, James Skehel has got a yellow card for that, but there could be further trouble ahead. Usually, it's Fergal Moore and Tony O'Gregan on the goal line with goalkeeper James Skehel for penalties. Yeah, look, at that was, it was reckless by James Skehel, he dived out with the two feet, took the legs, there was, I don't know if Fon Larkin was going to get control of the ball, but it's a penalty now, and in a tight game like this, there is a tendency maybe to tap it over the bar and go pint up but I think he'll have to go for it, it's the winner of the game is in this puck. Henry Shefflin 61st championship match for the 33 year old from Ballyhale, he's got 11 points in this match so far, 7 of them in the second half, the team's level at 18 points apiece or 12 to 18 points, Henry Shefflin striking and he's put it up high, up into the upper tier of the stand at the Davin end. He's got a 12th point, wasn't going for a goal there, wasn't taking a chance. Kilkenny by one. Well, I think that's a big, big, that's a big, big call. You know, if he'd scored a goal, more than likely the game was over. Goal will be relieved from that, and it just shows you the tension that's out there. It's such a tight game, and a big, big call by Henry Shefflin. Debbie Glennon has come on, and Damien Hayes is the one who has been taken off the Galway team. Who's going to win it? Kilkenny marginally ahead. Galway still with possession here, and Ir Latanian up into the clouds. Back down it comes into the hand of David Burke. Foul, free in. Chance for Joe Canning to come out and to get another one. He's got a goal in eight so far, and his team is a point behind in the 2012 All-Ireland Hurling Final big moment again, we've had plenty of big moments in this match, David Burke there, the ball went shooting up into the air no great direction but he showed bravery to go in and catch it and he's been a consistent performer, it's been a, a nervous, edgy final for the fans maybe, but for those of us watching here, absolutely thrilling. Absolutely and a great great catcher by David Burke and a high, a high tackle by Richie Hogan and now Joe Cannon, pressure back on him about 50 metres out Pretty central. Can he make it? And he's put it wide. He's missed it. Big miss, huge miss. Galway behind by a point still. Kilkenny ahead by 19 points to 2-12. So very rarely do Kilkenny win finals without scoring goals. I know, and you know, that just shows the nerves of the occasion. Joe Canning, look, he's had a he's had a great game and to miss a free like that and Hopefully it doesn't come down to that. Three additional minutes to be played, so we've now got three minutes and ten seconds to go. David Herity to puck it out. Kilkenny clinging to their one-point lead. Galway need to get the ball back. They have it back, and it's Tony O'Gregan. Dishing off the hand pass to David Collins. It breaks back into the middle as far as TJ Reid, elegantly outside for Michael Fennelly. And then Henry Shefflin, who lets fly who puts the ball away to the left-hand side and has missed the opportunity to add to his 12 points. It stays Kilkenny 19 points. Galway two goals and 12. The tension what is unbelievable. Jerry, look, that was a, I thought Michael Finley just should have put that over the bar himself and he did the right thing, gave it to the marksman and he put an easy wide as well and it just, there's an awful lot of tension out there at the moment. There hasn't been a draw to hurling final since 1959. Here's here Latanian and Tanyan drives it away into Hill 16 but away to the right hand side of the post and he's missed it and that is 13 wides now for Galway and they're shooting themselves in the foot and throwing it away they've had a guilt-edged opportunity of winning this final there's still a bit of time another two minutes of added time to play out comes the puck out through David Herity the next score is crucial now Shefflin again is crucial. Shefflin Again, masterminding this performance by Kilkenny, but he's dropped it short. And James Skehill drills it out into the middle. The referee allows play to continue as Tommy Welch went to the ground there. 
Cyril Donnellan was his marker. It's going to be a line ball for Galway. The manager's pacing up and down. Words of advice there from Anthony Cunningham. You see Brian Cody here pointing to his backs. Get into position. Close the gaps. What a what a match it has been. Irlitania dropped in here. Murphy winning the race. Can he get it away? Now as far as Richie Hogan, ever the star. Well away from danger. Another one minute and 20 seconds or thereabouts to go in the final. Tanya trying to get it back. Davy Glennon, will he be the hero? They need a score. He drives into the back to Jackie Turrell this time. He wins a free. And there's an opportunity as Jackie Turrell gets a yellow card for that. There's an opportunity once again as the managers exchange angry glances and a few words. Such is the tension of the occasion. Obviously, it's that last call. Yeah, absolutely. Did he charge? Did he not? Yeah, well, I, I think there was a ball there in the wing. Tommy Walsh attacked the ball, might have been fouled, didn't get the free in. And then David Lennon just ran into him there. And Brian Cody, very, very animated. And Anthony Cunningham standing his ground. And look, at, that's what happens in Ireland finals. This to tie up the All Ireland final and take it, I imagine, to a replay. Joe Canning with a goal and eight. The pressure of the entire county Galway on his shoulders. He's got it right. He's put it over the bar. A goal and nine for Joe Canning. After the lapses, he had the composure and the confidence to step up and to take it, and surely now to bring the match to a replay. 20, 2 9 to, 2 to 13 to 19 points, and the referee has blown the whistle. It's all over for the first time since 1959. When Kilkenny drew with Waterford, the match is going to go to a replay. Brian Cody, Anthony Cunningham, still with a few words there. Much of it to do with that last call, I think, but it all ends very amicably. And the two I managers... I don't know how amicable it was. Brian, Ho Brian Cody was pointing the finger. They were smiling. They were smiling at the end, but the tension... I don't think I've ever... It's a long time to experience tension like that at the end of a game. And I'd have to say, just from a player's point of view, a personal point of view, I'm delighted that it didn't end with Joe Canning missing the free, you know, after he played so well over the years as well, he's been such a tally man, tally's man, and to then have the composure to knock over the last by point. And I think a, a draw is a fair result today. You can see the relief, I think, from both sets of players. Don't They're forget that both matches today ended level, because Dublin's minors drew 116 to Tipperary's 213. Anthony Cunningham there with a shake of the hands of referee Barry Kelly. Look, full credit to both teams. They gave us a marvellous, marvellous match because I know a lot of people who didn't give Galway any chance whatsoever, but they stormed into that match and they were full value for their lead at halftime of five points. They gave away a few stupid frees towards the end of the first half. Kilkenny had the better of the second half. Henry Shefflin was a leader all the way through, got 12 points in all. Galway are already in the wind down. They're already preparing for the replay. We're looking forward to it. But uh, what a conclusion to that game. Absolutely, and you know, it's a cliche that the draw is a fair result, but I think on the balance of play, I think Galway completely dominated the first half. They were all over Kilkenny, and Kilkenny were in big, big trouble. They didn't spend much time in the dressing room, they were back on the field, and then they took over. Galway struggled to score for a long time in the second half, and yet, you know, they got a goal, Niall Burke got a great finish. They made some big calls on the sideline, taking off Niall Burke, who scored 1 2, bringing on Connor Cooney, taking them off again. They're big calls in the Ireland final, and at the end of the day, I think a draw was a fair result, and Henry Sheffield had a penalty. He scored many of them over the years. He, he tapped it over the bar, and I think that was a big, big decision by him. It left Galway within a point, and at the end of the day, they got the draw, and I think they deserved it. And look at great, an awful lot of attention, as I say. Maybe not the highest score and most free-flowing game of all time, but I really enjoyed it. It was a great battle, and looking forward to the replay. Don't forget, Michael, the goal, we got just a, a goal and a point from play during that entire second half. They were dependent on Joe Canning to get three points from Freeze as well. Replay of this match will be Sunday, the 30th of September. And that is an occasion which I know every Kilkenny and Galway Hurling fans will not want to miss. They have uh, a few weeks now to prepare for it. Who's going to be the more disappointed? Oh, I think probably, you know, I think Galway will be more disappointed. I think they'll be both obviously very disappointed, but I think Galway, you know, they're in such a great position. Uh, the huge support up here. Kilkenny have won so much, you know, and it, like they're a great team, but nobody outside of Kilkenny, Cork and Tip, as we discussed before the game privately, has won all since 1998. And uh, I think... Since Offaly. Since Offaly in 98. I'm not bringing that into it because of that. But uh, 
look at a great occasion the replay on the 30th of September and look we we'll really look forward to that and it'll give people three weeks to get a few quid back in their pockets and come back to Dublin <laughs> again for the weekend well the last time there was a draw it was 1959 Kilkenny and Waterford drew on that occasion and Waterford who might well have been seen as the underdogs at that stage went and won the replay will Galway do something similar Anthony Cunningham there with uh, Matty Kenny and Tom Hellebert right in the thick of that and having words with their charges it has been a memorable All-Ireland final for many reasons. I yes, there were errors, but there was also a whole series of heroic performances. Uh, yeah, I think the lads are getting a bit off their chest there, the, the selectors and management, but that's worthless to the players. Their heads are full of other things now, disappointment, relief, everything else, and they're getting a great reception, and look at win. We have a few weeks now, we've done the Gala Mayo to look forward to in a couple of weeks, and then the summer will be dragged on by another couple of weeks now, and that's the, I'm really looking forward to the replay. A reminder then of the score at full time. It's Galway, two goals and 13 points. Kilkenny, 19 points. No cup today, Michael, but a lot of good memories. Well, no cup today and plenty of drama. Commentators on today's or Ireland hurling final, Ger Canning and Michael Dignan. Liam Sheedy, Gerard Nant, Moss McCahey here with me in studio. Nail biter comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a game. What a game. I mean, that second half had everything, you know. And in Galway built up a lovely cushion at half time. You think they'd push on, but I mean, Kilkenny just came out in the second half. They were out early, but by God, were they ready, you know? Mm. Well, I mean, Henry Shefflin, I mean, we've talked about him time and time again, and okay, but well, it's not just his freeze. Mm. His whole attitude and his demeanour in that second half was that we mean business. I mean, mm. the guy that's been so successful, I thought he dragged single handedly that team yep. back into the championship. Yeah. I thought it was outstanding today, but in fairness to Galway, they kept plugging. You know, they only scored 1 4 in the second half, seven wides, you know. Uh, mm. Kilkenny only had one. Margins were always going to be so tight, but a fabulous second half. I mean, the match at Everton had brilliant saves, brilliant goals, brilliant play, huge intensity, very, very enjoyable. I, I personally, I think we're all delighted that we're, we're going to see this again. And the funny thing is, in the first half, uh, when I was looking at it, Gerald was saying to say, it doesn't have anything kind of like the intensity of, say, the, the tip. Uh, Kilkenny finals of two years there, but well, uh, it certainly all clicked together in the second half. Henry took a free just after half time and you know brought it back to the four points again. And from then on, it was just epic stuff, you know. And the epi epic is used too often, like in sporting contests. But my God, everybody around us, that has were in their mouths, you know. They're watching that field for every move, who was moving where. And of course, the star stood out at the end. Brian Hogan, Tommy Welsh mm. in defence. Absolutely magnificent. T uh, uh, as you said, uh, Henry uh, Shefflin, yeah. you know, what a leader. But ultimately, it came down really to the shootout between J J Joe and, and, and Henry. And you know, when Joe missed the free, what a terrible way that would be to lose it, you know. Sure. But then they got the other free, and I think everybody's delighted, apart from maybe Carl Winkle getting into the yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I. I I know there was a lot of freezing and stuff like that. Maybe you could question maybe some of the decisions and stuff like that on either side, you know. I mean, I know Cody was animated below the line with the last free and stuff like that as well, but the referee was blowing for those all day. Anytime you ran at the defender, you were being pulled down, he was given the free, right? So, I mean, it was right. I mean, Galway deserved a second shot at this. I mean, they had everything in their game in the first half. What I did fear about them in the second half came true for long periods. They went back into their shell a bit, they went back into the defensive mode, and then we saw more and more ball going down on top of Brian Hogan and Tommy Welch, and they started winning possession. Let's hear from the Galway manager, Anthony Cunningham. He's talking to Claire McNamara. Anthony, incredible stuff. How is your heart? Well, it's fine, really. I suppose it was, it was always going to be nip, nip and tuck and very close with Kilkenny, and I think they powered into us there in the second half. We had a great start to a great first half, but uh, maybe lost our way for the first 10 minutes of the second half. And then rallied again, and then they rallied, and great save by James Cahill, and drama there, then a penalty, and then a few good scores for us, and um, it was very, very tough there early on, or late on, uh, rather. So uh, we're delighted to get the draw. We were down going into injury time, but um, I suppose traditionally whoever gets the last score has, has a bit of an advantage the next day, and we hope it's us. Let's uh, start at the end and go back, if you don't mind. That last free, was it a free? Oh, definitely it was a free, yeah. Definitely it was a free. You know, he, he played his early and was, you know, you know, you know there's, a, there's, there's, there's small uh, wins and gains and uh, that definitely was a free, but uh, and I'm sure everybody knows that, but and it, everybody will fight that it isn't a free at that stage of the game, naturally, you know. So, uh, look, at, uh, we're delighted to be, to be there again. It's huge learning for us and uh, we think we'll take more from it for the next day, but it'll be, it'll be down to the wire again. 
and Joe Canning stood up and took that and got it, having just missed one earlier. Yeah, I suppose he didn't hurl for the one before that, but uh, you know, clinical with the freeze, and uh, you know, I think from both sides there's probably a few freeze missed, and the breeze probably is a bit more swirly than people maybe thought there from time time to time. But uh, look, we're delighted with our display, and uh, it's in three weeks' time, I'm told, so we'll knuckle down again during the week. Incredible first half, Joe Canning, of course, got you up and running with that great goal in Galway. Really very confident, very much in control. Yeah, and um, we probably had a bit of the wind there in the first half as well, and, and winning, winning the 50-50 balls, really. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a pity we couldn't keep that going in the second half, but you never will. You never dominate Kilkenny for a full match, and uh, they're always going to have their, their good times as well. But it was real honest to God stuff there, and uh, great, great display of hurling from both sides, and uh, we'll have to take our, our head off to a true manly game there. I suppose the great thing for all of us looking on is that we get to see it all again. I mean, part three of the summer, you've shown that you can compete with them, you've beaten them already. How do you approach the, the replay now? Well, it's part three, as you said. It's, um, <laughs> I suppose, a, a win, a draw, and uh, we hope to make it a win again. But uh, it'll, be, it'll be nip and tuck again. There'll be nothing in it, and there never is in Ireland, all Ireland final day. We've seen that over the last number of years. They've been fantastic finals, and today was, was heart-stopping stuff as well, and uh, we're just delighted to be part of it. Obviously today your players haven't as much experience of the big final day as Kilkenny have, but today will uh, mean a lot to them. It will, yeah, and that's why I said uh, we're a developing side and big, big, big bonus like to play in a final. And uh, we have to be very impressed with the way the guys approached it and uh, the way they, they started and played in the first half. And uh, it's something we'll, we'll work on again for the next day. You're up against Brian Cody again the next day. You had a few words there over that disputed last free. Oh, it's just natural that you'll always dispute a free at that stage of the game. But sure, Brian, Brian Cody's a legend, and and you know they're 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 true gentlemen really after pitch, and but they fight for their lives when they're there, and you know so do we all. And uh, it'll be nip and tuck again the next day. And as you mentioned, Antti, do you think the momentum is maybe with you now because you did get that last score? Well, that's nearly always the way, but I mean, you never have Kilkenny beaten until the final whistle goes, but uh, you know, we'll be trying our damnedest again the next day and I'm sure uh, we'll turn up in the same frame of mind and one, one better we'll, we'll go the next day with the help of God. Well, we look forward to it. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks very much. Oh, we will indeed, and more of the same wouldn't do us any harm, would it? Uh, no, it would not, no. <laughs> or maybe it would. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was edge of the seat stuff. I mean, even when the penalty was given, you're saying, God, will he go for a goal, will he go for a pint? I mean, it was end to end. Johnny Cohen's catch out of the sky, corner back, you know, five foot something grabbing the ball out of the sky. I thought Earl Tanyan at midfield. Brilliant. You know, I mean, I would have questioned at the start of the year, will this guy have an engine to get around 70 minutes of crowbar? And he got a right smack in the ankle early on, and he still ploughed on, and he was winning freeze. I thought overall, like the matchups, that you know, it was just right, right from the start to finish, the end-to-end -end stuff, the, you know, really manly stuff, I think. And, you know, both teams will be looking and, forward and, to three weeks' time. Like the new, that's the way they positioned Tanyan today. Mm. He positioned himself just as they call it in soccer, in the pocket, yeah. in yeah, front yeah. of the half-back uh, line. Uh, and they just the ball, broke yeah. the ball down to him and he delivered it straight away. Real mm. great ball into the, into the forwards. Now, sometimes it's a bit too high, misdirected, mm. but he had a fantastic game today. And, you know, Galway got it right tactically, all over the field. He got it really, really right. I suppose in the second half, is, you know, Tomás is right there. One four in the second half is not enough, really, you know. And the goal, you could say, <laughs> I know Kilkenny people might be saying, did he pick it off the ground? But it was a break. But yes. really, really, Kilkenny's dominance was based on the old uh, formula that they've had for the last ten years. Well, I think Tommy I, I, Walsh, brilliant. Mm. And above all, Hogan was, Brian Hogan mm. was just... He commanded the air in the second half, but at the I, same I, time, I, I you know... I'll go back to, Liam, or to Liam's point though, about Shefflin. I mean, when he went to centre-forward as the yeah. number 11, he changed the game for Kilkenny in that second half period. They were struggling. They, were one, they weren't catching ball. They weren't getting onto the breaking ball. But when he went in there, he told them all, get out of my way, go out to the wings, let me hold the central position. And he started one after the other, started winning ball out of the air, got the hurley up, got the touches, and the freeze. I mean, some of the freeze were just breathtaking and, stuff. And you know? I mean, it was he laid on the ball for Finlay. It was a strike, yeah. And it was a for chance for the goal that he could have went to himself. Yeah. But Scale's save was just absolutely yes, fantastic. Well, you know? we go through a few of those things. Galway weren't getting scores very freely in that second half. Niall Burke's goal was the bonus that sort of kept them in the game because you felt at that stage it was slipping away. Ger said, question is, I wonder, did he pick it off the ground? It was hard to know, but let's have a yeah. look. Yeah, but I think where Kenny, where Kilkenny will be a bit cross to themselves is that, you know, Kieran Jace had gone back into cornerback and, you know, in fairness to Sir Donald wins a great ball, but really two Kilkenny players go for the one ball. You know, I mean, uh, um, 
Kieran Jace had full view of what was behind him there. Kieran Jace should have led up uh, Brian Hogan for the ball and waited for the break, but he didn't. He went in with his man, two of them collided, ball breaking through. I didn't think he picked no, it up. I think there was, there was no grass in that pick. I think he will watch it now closely again. No, no that's a, that's no, a perfect no. pick Correct. to me. Yeah. And he sticks it in the back of the net. And uh, you know that was a vital score because at that stage Galway were Galway well, were struggling. It was, a, you know, it was a, maybe a surprise score. that he was taken off after scoring one two. I know Brian Hogan had come yeah. into the game, but even yeah. just move, moving him to the wing or maybe into a corner mm -hmm. position because like he, I mean, scoring one two in Ireland final, I thought yeah. he was very effective. Well, at that, at that stage, yeah. 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 when you see yeah. himself, yeah. when you see yeah. himself yeah. taken off, yes. and Damien Hayes taken off as well towards the end. You know all the predictions we had beforehand. You kind of went without the window, but you know Hogan is still so vital for, for Kilkenny when he's out of the game that's struggling but when he's commanding the game he holds that centre so well Kilkenny get this penalty in the second half now in the first half Shefton had a free and he attempted a goal from it when he got the penalty he took a different view obviously he was playing the percentages yeah well Eddie Brennan was behind when we said <laughs> if he goes for a point it'll be a draw if he goes for a goal if he goes it'll win it yes. yeah. you know and that's the way that's, that's, that's what you're saying now again look at uh, uh, Owen Larkin here the, the flick across oh uh, well it was I mean, a penalty no question about yeah. it down on top of him one of the few things on Larkin did in the, in the it was, it was out of the game for most of the time he got a great point mm. now here we say mm. now I mean, in fairness now the referee is totally consistent there because he gave a free against Tommy Welch for doing the very half. same thing in the first half now wonder why did he go for the points you know mm. like if, you, if, if you take against Tipperary in, uh, in, in 2009 when he got a penalty roughly around the same time he had, now maybe he had to bury it, you know. Maybe mm. he had to bury it. Yeah. But if he scored that, it would have been the winning of the game. Sure. You know. Yeah. But well, I, think I, I, think I, I, I think the, yeah. the winning of the game though was was the chance that Colin Finley got for Kilkenny. You know, I think Shefflin was right to go for a point at that stage. I mean, time was almost up. I think there was two and a half minutes left or something. Like that was it in the uh, game. Yeah. Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. To put a point up.